This video is brought to you in partnership with Musicbed, the best place to find high quality music for your filmmaking projects. Check out the link in the description to view their high quality library of music for your next project. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Today, I want to break down our process of how we produce our videos here on the platform. Now, this isn't necessarily a photography-based video, but I do think it will provide a lot of value for those of you who are looking to up the quality of your videos and overall just some insight into our process and how we do things here. So a little bit of backstory, I work in tandem with Thomas, who basically runs the entire video portion of my company. Uh, he shoots everything and he edits everything. Uh, but otherwise, it's a pretty collaborative process between the two of us. And I think it's important to note that I can't do this alone anymore. I really have to have the help. And Thomas absolutely kills it. If you guys want to check out his work, first and foremost, it'll be linked down in the description. So first and foremost, when we craft a YouTube video, what first comes to mind is what kind of video are we making? We make a variety of different videos here on this YouTube channel, ranging from short films to gear and more technical related videos, as well as a few tutorials here and there ranging all the way up to our field trip series, which are way more highly produced and honestly a lot more work to put together. So it's important to kind of distinguish what kind of video we're making and how much time it's going to take to get that through to the finish line. Once we have the idea of the video we're going to make and roughly how much time it's going to take to put into this video, we can start kind of scheduling this out in the future and figuring out if there's a sponsor for the video, when it needs to go live, and also putting together a script. Now, for all of this, we use Notion. It honestly is just the best way that I've found to stay organized with all the videos that we're making. We do anywhere from four to six videos a month here on this YouTube channel. And frankly, it's a lot of work, especially when we want to keep the videos as high quality as possible. We just wanna make sure that everything meshes really well and provides a lot of interesting and unique information for you guys to watch. So honestly, I could do an entire separate video on Notion and the workflow on Notion. Uh, it's fairly complicated at first, but I think once you get used to what you really need to get out of it, it doesn't have to be. It can be pretty simple. We mainly just use a couple different databases, one for Patreon and one for YouTube. And we have several different kind of categories for the title of the video, you know, the status of the video, how far along is it in the actual filming process? Is it just starting out as an idea? Do we have a script written and ready to go? Is it need to be filmed? And so on and so forth. We also have sections for sponsors and the date of publish. Oftentimes there are deadlines, so we need to make sure that things are coming out on a consistent basis. And at the end of the month, we just wanna make sure that everything that we are obligated to do is done. Within Notion, it's really nice to be able to work with Thomas, so him and I both can see a bird's eye view of all the projects that we're working on, when they need to be completed, and honestly kind of just a mini little to-do list for both of us on what we both need to get done in order to make these videos as high quality as possible. So once we have all those details nailed down into Notion, usually we will continue the process and start figuring out locations and where this needs to be shot. Oftentimes, if it's just a video that needs to be filmed in the studio, that makes things nice and easy, but usually it's a combination of the two. It's a little bit of talking in front of the camera. We're also gonna go film some B-roll somewhere, and we need to figure out if we're gonna need to shoot video of somebody. Is there a subject involved? Are we taking photos? Is it just video? There's lots of different ways of kind of figuring out what we need to shoot. And again, just being as organized as possible, I think really helps this process. For example, if we are taking portraits of somebody, obviously I will need to kind of figure that out logistically, where we're shooting, what time of day, who we're shooting, what they're wearing, and also explain the whole process to you know the person I'm taking photos of as well. Uh, there's a lot of different components involved and that's kind of where I assume the role of a producer essentially. I'm producing all these videos, just making sure everything's organized ready to go on the day of the shoot. So it makes it nice and easy for us down the road. So like I said, there are a variety of different videos on this channel, but a lot of the time it's a fairly run and gun workflow when we're actually out shooting video. Thomas knows exactly what we're looking for when it comes to actually capturing the video while we're out you know, shooting random things. He knows exactly what we're looking for and we kind of make sure they're both on the same page before we start filming. I don't feel the need to provide a lot of direction when we're actually shooting. We kind of do that process beforehand just to make sure that we're both on the same page and everything is organized in terms of the shot list if we actually need one and also just understanding the overall vibe of the video what we're going for obviously this process changes with each and every video but i do think when it comes to something like our field trip series this is much more well produced and it takes a lot more time 
honestly, from start to finish, this entire process could take easily two to three weeks. And they're a lot of work. They're a lot more work than your typical YouTube video, which we could easily film in a couple hours. So when it comes to the actual tools that we use, we film everything on the Canon C70, which is my first cinema camera that I ever purchased. I wanna do a video on this at some point, but it's just been a joy to use. It works really well for what we need it for. Built-in ND filters, C-Log2, which is very easy to grade and it really brings out a lot of the nice natural colors that we really want to work with. The great RF lens selection works really well in tandem with my Canon EOS R5, so we can kind of flip-flop the lenses between the two. And overall, it just works really well. We love it. And for what we film and the way that we like to film, this camera works perfectly. When it comes to lights, we use the Aperture 300D Mark II, which you guys have seen in my studio tour. We have it mounted on the ceiling behind me, so that's what's giving all this nice light right now on my face. We use a combination of that and sometimes a 120D as well. It just kind of depends on what we need it for. We'll bring the 300D usually on the field trip series so we can light the interviews and make sure they look good, especially if we're filming on a location. It's really nice to have a light to bounce off the wall and just make sure everything's nice and filled out. When it comes to on-location stuff, typically it's a lot of natural light stuff. We kind of just wait for the best time of day to shoot. If we're gonna go shoot portraits, for example, we're gonna wait until the last couple hours of the day just because that's definitely the best light to work with and so on and so forth. You guys kind of get what I'm saying. Sometimes we'll shoot in the morning really early just to get some nice clean sunrise light. Sometimes we'll shoot in the afternoon and evening. And then kind of during the day, we'll shoot anything in the studio that we need to get done because we can control the light in here and make sure it looks nice and clean. So when it comes to the actual studio space, I think this is really where having an actual space to film is extremely helpful. Uh, I picked up the studio uh, about eight months ago now in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I don't know what really convinced me to do that, but here we are. And this is kind of the main place where we get everything done. Thomas is up here, I would say three to four days a week, usually putting together some sort of video that we're working on. Either we're filming or we are reviewing an edit, something like that where we need to be in person. Otherwise, he doesn't necessarily have to be here to get things done when it comes to editing. When it comes to the actual layout of the studio, I think this is important to note that I've kind of laid this out in a way that makes sense for us. The kind of first half of the studio, uh, right here with my desk, as you guys can see, is laid out in a way where we can literally basically just turn on the light, put the microphone here, turn the camera on, press record, and we're ready to go. And that's the nice thing about having a space that isn't at home is because we can kind of leave things up, leave things the way they are. And it makes it pretty easy to actually get high quality footage of me talking fairly easily. You know, there's not a lot of obstacles that you actually have to go through to get great quality footage. And that was the initial goal with this space. So once we've actually shot a video, this is kind of where Thomas takes it to the finish line. Like I said, I am much more involved in kind of the ideating and producing process of the videos. But after that, we've gotten to a point where Thomas knows exactly what I'm looking for and we really kind of collaborate and make sure that the video is exactly the way that we want it. I think this is the benefit to working with someone over a long period of time is, you know, everyone's on the same page, everyone understands what we're going for, and we can pump out fairly consistent, high quality videos. And that's really the goal with this channel. So I think the first component of the post-production process is music. And this is where I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Musicbed for sponsoring today's video. Now, as you guys probably know, Musicbed has been a sponsor of this channel for a long time now and has recently hopped on with our field trips series, which I can't thank them enough. Honestly, Musicbed is by far and large the best place to find music for your filmmaking projects. When I think about Musicbed, I don't really think of actual stock music. When you guys think of the word stock music, you know, a lot of things come to mind and frankly, none of that is really found on Musicbed's website. They have actual artists who make really great music that pairs really well with the kind of stuff that we're shooting on a very regular basis. For someone like myself who runs kind of multiple different components of a business, you really want things to just work and you want to find things that just kind of fit into your workflow in a seamless way. And Musicbed is by far and large one of the best components of the actual filmmaking process for us. Finding a good song for your short film or YouTube video is hard enough and Musicbed really makes this process incredibly easy. Something that's kind of underrated about Musicbed as well is their mobile app and how good that is. You can literally just put some headphones in if you have like a free hour, listen to some music and figure out what kind of song you might want to use for your next project. And that process alone just makes discovery of actual great artists and music on there really easy and really simple to use. Thomas and I can create projects on their website, send songs back and forth, and just make sure that we are kind of aligned with the kind of music that we want to be using. If you guys want a discount on your Musicbed subscription, definitely check the link in the description where you guys can find more information and also get started finding the best song for your next project. Thank you so much to Musicbed for sponsoring this episode. When it comes to the actual editing process, I'm gonna let Thomas explain a little bit more of how this works and the programs that we use. So Thomas, take it away. 
Hey everyone, I'm Thomas Kovacic, and just like Sam said, I've been shooting and editing all this video since I think October of 2020. So up until about a couple weeks ago, I was editing all of our stuff off of my 2017 fully specced out MacBook Pro. And it did the job, it was fine, but ever since Sam got the C70, my MacBook just wouldn't want to work with it. The workflow just bogged down, it was too slow, and we had to run proxies for basically everything. And that ultimately made me want to buy the M1 Mac Mini. So I just bought the M1 Mac Mini like a couple weeks ago, and it's now my main workhorse of a computer. It's pretty crazy. These C70 files would not play back well without proxies on my MacBook Pro. Now I could play it back in full 4K with a little bit of color and still have clean playback. Overall, editing off this M1 Mac Mini is just a joy. Paired up with this Mac Mini, I have the LG Ultrafine 4K at home, and at the office, Sam has the LG Ultrafine 5K. And then for the software, this is kind of a big surprise for a lot of people. We edit all of our stuff fully from start to finish in DaVinci Resolve. I feel like Resolve gives you a pretty good package compared to Premiere. Resolve is stable, it's fast, the coloring tools are incredible. So that's kind of the background of our post process. But once we've shot all of our footage for our project, the post time can range from five hours to a couple weeks. It really just depends on project to project how long the post process is. And yeah, Sam's gonna tell you about this really cool thing that we use for all of our revisions. See ya. When it comes to reviewing the actual video and making sure everything is good to go, buttoned up, and also being able to send to clients for review, we use Frame.io for this process and I can't highly recommend them enough. I haven't used Frame.io until recently, but honestly, it makes so much sense for our process and how we like to do things. Oftentimes our videos are pretty large in file size and their uploader just works so well. We connect an ethernet cable to our MacBook. Once the actual video is uploaded, Frame.io makes it so easy to add timestamped notes for specific parts of the video that I might want changed or corrected. And it just makes the collaboration process a little bit easier, which is never a bad thing. When it comes to review links versus something like Dropbox, Frame.io is just made for video projects specifically. So it makes it so easy to just send a link out to somebody. They can take a look, they can review it, and they can also add notes as well. You can have downloads and the whole process just makes so much sense for us. So all in all, once all this is done, we will quick publish to YouTube, but you know, that's where you guys see what we've created. You don't see this whole entire process beforehand. And I really wanted to explain a little bit of our process behind making these videos here on YouTube. I think when it comes to videos, my philosophy is always make it as high quality as you possibly can. And for me, that's what I really feel like we can offer. This platform is really high quality videos paired with really interesting images, cool conversations and a unique approach and perspective on photographing and equipment. With all that being said, thanks to you guys for watching this video and thanks for all the love on these past episodes. We've really been having a lot of fun making these videos for the channel. Thanks again to Musicbed for sponsoring this episode. Again, if you guys want to check out the link in the description, that's all down there and ready to go. Take care guys, peace.